Welcome to Sincerely Me, a podcast about self-discovery and inner work so you can cultivate a deeper relationship to yourself and show up more fully in your work and life. My name is Talia Delju and I'm honored to be your host. Hey everyone, welcome back to the podcast. We are nearing the end of January and if I don't know, I feel like this year has been a pretty energizing start. I know that the end of last year for myself and many folks was kind of slow and a little bit, um, yeah, I guess we'll keep it at that, just a little bit slow. And I've been feeling lots of energy and momentum as I've been moving into 2020, and I hope you are too. A part of that was because I got to spend about a week in Costa Rica celebrating a friend's wedding, and it ended up being a bit of a mini grad school friend reunion, which just left me feeling so inspired and excited to come back to my life, to my work, to my relationships. Um, Sometimes getting out of your environment is all you need to shake things up and wake up a little bit. So um, thank you to all my friends for lifting me up, for giving me some inspiration, for sharing their thoughts and ideas. We all are in the world of coaching and positive psychology and leadership and so to just bounce ideas around and to speak with folks who you know speak the same language share the same values and are passionate about the same things can really put some wind under your wings so that's where I'm at I am riding that wave right now and hoping to build off of the momentum that's begun this year for me in 2020 So today's conversation is with Vanessa Rodriguez, and we are talking all about aligning with your soul's purpose. Now, purpose is a topic that's been super top of mind for me recently, and well, not just recently, but for years. It's kind of what led me to even going to graduate school to study positive psychology. Um, So I'm going to be dedicating a lot of future content and episodes to the topic of purpose. I think it's such a multifaceted, multi-layered, complex thing, and it's just been really fun to get people's perspectives and insights like Vanessa on the idea of purpose. And I think it just goes to show that there's no one right or wrong. There's no like right or wrong way to think about purpose, to find purpose, pursue your purpose. It really does look differently for everyone. It's just finding what resonates most with you. Um, And something that I've been sitting with for a while is how much pressure and expectations people place on themselves to quote unquote, find their purpose. And there's this like assumption that we all have a purpose and one purpose. And if you don't know what your purpose is in this life, then like, what are you doing? Right. And your purpose is the thing you have to do. And if you don't have that sense of purpose, then you're completely lost and living this like meaningless, purposeless, aimless life, which is not true at all. But I think because there's such the, such a movement around finding your purpose, finding your purpose, finding your purpose, we get super caught up in the story. And unless we feel like we've found it or figured it out, uh, we can kind of just feel a little bit stuck. And so something I've been thinking about that's deeply, deeply resonated actually came up in a conversation in Costa Rica under the stars with a beautiful friend of mine, Annalise. And, and we kind of came to this idea that maybe instead of thinking about it as finding your purpose instead of that what if we thought about it as living with purpose that to me feels so much more expansive and just like makes me feel inspired because living with purpose is a lot more related to kind of who you're being in the world and how you're being in the world whereas finding your purpose is all about doing like what are you doing um whether, you know, through your work or otherwise. So anyways, I wanted to plant that seed in your mind to think about living with purpose instead of finding your purpose and see where that takes you, see where that lands, see what that brings up for you. And again, we'll definitely be exploring this in future episodes. But today, Vanessa is sharing her own perspectives and insights on aligning with your soul's purpose, how to do it, what are the indicators when you're not aligned, um, and yeah, there's just so much goodness that she shares with us today. At the end of the episode, I also asked her 
for some guidance just out of curiosity because she is also an Akashic Record reader and she'll explain what that means in the episode. But um, I asked her how I could live in more alignment with my soul's purpose just to kind of see what came up and her answers and her insight and the information she was able to channel was so fascinating to hear. So um, if you're not familiar with channeling or Akashic Record reading or energy work, it might be a little bit new to you, but I just ask that you remain open to it, stay curious, and see how it sits with you. Um, Other things to share before I get the conversation going. So like I mentioned before, Vanessa has an awesome podcast called Feed Your Wild, and her and I did a little bit of a podcast swap. So we both interviewed each other for our separate podcasts. So you can check out my conversation with her on her podcast that is linked in the show notes in addition to a couple other interviews I was... um, honored to have on some other folks' beautiful podcasts. So check them out. I share a lot about positive psychology, purpose, fear, um, and so much more. So all of those episodes are linked in the show notes for you if you're down for a mini podcast binge. I think there are about five or six different Um, podcast that I've been interviewed on in the past few weeks. So be sure to check them out. And here is my conversation with Miss Vanessa. Hi, Vanessa. Thank you so much for joining me on the podcast today. I cannot wait to get into our conversation. Oh, thanks so much for having me. I'm so excited to be here. So you are many things, a functional nutritionist, an intuitive nourishment coach, and founder of Wildly Rooted. And I love I love the name of your business. I love the work that you do. And I would love for you to start by sharing a little bit more about Wildly Rooted, the name, what it means, and how it influences the work you do in your business today. Gosh, I feel like Wildly Rooted really started as... Um, a message to me on a personal level before I even applied it to my business. At at that point, I was already sort of health coaching and bringing in nutritional uh, coaching into my my business and my work. Um, I had a different name, but what I found is that names typically find you or, you know, there's, there's a lot of things that work that way. So uh, one of my challenges, literally my entire life, and I see also as one of my gifts, but, you know, I think with all gifts, we there's there's sort of the shadow side of it, too. And, and we have to work with that is that. um it's very easy for me to like get out outside of my body to um, I feel like I've always been kind of intuitive. Uh, I've worked a lot at that, but it was always easy for me to get outside of this embodied realm <laughs> and and kind of to be up in the clouds, you know, and be in, as a dreamer um, and imagining a lot, like very much so in my imagination when I was a kid, even when I did embodied experience is like dance. I was a dancer for a very long time. I went elsewhere. I went to a different place. So I found that while that was very beneficial, especially in terms of my work uh, with clients on a, on a one-on-one basis to kind of tune into what's going on for them, I also found that there it led to a lot of challenges for myself in my life experience. And that meant um, like the practical things, the mundane things, and actually being in my body and connecting fully with my bodily experience. And so I see how now looking back, um, not being grounded and not being rooted really led me to a place of disconnection from my body and not being able to receive the communication from my body and from my environment in this embodied realm that that we all need. Like we need to be talking to our body and listening to our body every day. And so I had a lot of health challenges when I was younger. Um, A lot of them I thought were genetic because my mom had also had them. But what I found was that the more that I was able to get rooted, I was able to not only cultivate 
a deeper connection with my body and an understanding and a knowing of what intuitively was good for me um, and to experience things in a much deeper embodied way, I was also able to go outside of my body in a much safer way, in a way that was more grounded and rooted, yet allowed me to be that wild spirit that I, that I was, that I am. And so I was in meditation one day and just this, this name, this term came to me that I need to stay wildly rooted. And as I am rooted, I can be wild. And, um, and so wild to me is really all about connecting in with the most innate, natural parts of ourselves that are connected in with nature because we are nature and we so often forget that. And that in this wildness, tapping into that, we have access to so many of the answers that we seek. And so it's this disconnection from this wildness that can lead to a lot of um, dis-ease as well. And so it was just sort of this beautiful combination of the wild and the rooted sides of me. And it made so much sense as I really began to um, embody that in my own life so that I can also be of service to others too. I love that. I think it's such an important lesson. I mean, for me, just hearing that, I think it's it's that reminder that you don't have to choose between these different parts of you, but it's about integrating them and feeling feeling and finding that sense of wholeness where you can be grounded and, you know, wildly free to explore and to imagine and to to experience life in the way you want to. And I yeah, I just love that as a reminder for anyone listening. It's it's not about choosing one way. It's about finding all the ways that feel good and learning how to integrate them into all parts of who you are. Exactly. Yes. And that it's also a lifelong practice. Like I am, Mm -hmm. I didn't finish, (laughs) you know, there is no finish line with this. And, and so allowing for that compassion to be there when we get off track, like I know I do, my tendency is to get out of my body. Um, I, you know, for looking even astrologically at our natal charts, I have like no major influences in any earth signs. Like I have no earth signs in my chart. So it's, it's, it's difficult for me to stay grounded and rooted. And so it having it as the name of, you know, the namesake of my business and my soul work, it's a constant reminder. But yeah, I think that it's important just to kind of really be compassionate in these realms and where we know that maybe we have a tendency towards something and then it's just a lifelong practice to reel ourselves back in. Yeah, absolutely. The work is never done. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So you, at the end of that right there, you mentioned your soul work. And I know the topic that we decided to explore for the episode today is aligning with your soul's purpose. And I'm very familiar with the language and the world of soul work, um, but we haven't talked much about it on the podcast. So I would I would love to start a little bit high level, um, let's say for someone who's really not familiar with this type of work or with this language, how would you explain, um, let, let's just start with like soul, like what is a soul? Mm. Who is a soul? Like how do we... Um, understand that part of ourselves before we talk about aligning with it and and feeling connected to our purpose. Yeah, that is one of the biggest questions, right? Yeah. That that's <laughs> yeah. out there, and I would argue that nobody really knows knows knows. Um, you know, all the vastness, I don't think we can even p- fully put it into words and understand it through the brains that we have, <laughs> you know, like sort of filtered through the, this beautiful mm-hmm. tool that is our brain. Um, so I'll just start there with that disclaimer. But my understanding of the soul is that it is at its essence the um, vibrational 
container and imprint of who we really are that spans beyond space and time, spans beyond this embodied life and world, and yet also encompasses our body. I believe that our body is an expression of our soul. And in it's interesting in the work that I do, which really combines um, you know, very mundane body connected work with nutrition and functional nutrition and the science with that, along with more soul level healing, is that I see as we shift things at more of the soul level, which we could speak to, we begin to see things change on a physical realm in our bodies. Mm. So that's a connection. I don't like to disconnect the two because I really believe that they are part of, you know, the same imprint. And so we carry, we, the, our soul is our essence. We carry this, um, through, you know, different times. I mean, there's even concepts like past lives, interdimensional lives, lives that are happening at the same time, whatever your belief system is. And, you know, it doesn't really matter. I think what matters is just sort of this understanding that our soul is beyond the constructs of uh, space time. Mm. And, um, and that it holds the wisdom and the knowledge that we need um, for any life expression. So in this lifetime, I can access my soul and my higher self to answer the questions that I have that maybe I have forgotten about myself. Mm. My, I consider, let's say healing, for example, because I'm in the healing arts, Healing to me is not about, you know, eradication of a disease or finding a cure. Healing is about this rediscovery process, this process of self-discovery and rediscovery of who we really are and the truths that we already hold. Mm -hmm. And we all have access to that. And where I see that dis-ease or disease comes in is when we are disconnected from that and we allow other influences to come in and take that on as our own and it builds up. And, you know, so there's a lot of different theories around how disease actually manifests. But my whole thing is let's just focus on getting you connected back to the truths that you hold and getting you connected back to your true soul self. Because when we can eliminate everything else that is not you, your body is this natural healing machine. I mean, it's beyond a machine. But we come into this earth knowing how to heal without having to tell our bodies to do so. Mm. And yeah, that's I, I don't know if that really answers the question of what is a soul, but I hope that kind of just paints a picture of like the realms that we're talking about here. Totally. Yeah. I've honestly not heard it be explained in such a perfect way. That was amazing. <laughs> that was very articulate and such a great way to, I think, lead us into a bigger conversation about purpose, about soul's purpose and about aligning with that. So what I what I want to do is have a, like a little bit of a almost like a word play game right now and ask you um, to like almost complete the idea or the sentence that I want to present to you. So the first is um, when you are in alignment with your soul's purpose, you blank. How would you – like what would you attach to that sentence? Hmm. What wouldn't you be? Yeah. <laughs> it's like – you know, what wouldn't you do? What wouldn't you be? Um, when you are aligned with your soul's purpose, is that how it starts? Yeah. yeah. Um, when you are aligned with your soul's purpose, you no longer need to seek outside of yourself. Mm. Um, and truth pours through you and you embody that. So anything becomes possible, literally anything becomes possible. You embody the, cre you tap into that creative force that has created the universe and beyond. Like that is the type of energy that we're talking about that we are directly plugged into. And so what I have seen, I mean, this is even recorded in what's called, what you could call radical remissions. Um, so a lot of 
you know, my filter and lens is through healing work because that's just the work that I do. Um, this obviously can apply to manifestations in your career and family life and all of that. But what I have seen is that when you can align with your soul and your soul's purpose, um, miracles literally happen. And so there, now having said that, I, I also want us to ground into sort of this, um, this topic with an understanding that it may not always look like what we think we want. Mm -hmm. Because I, I think that we have a lot of beliefs and um, thoughts that aren't necessarily our own that we might inherit or adopt or we might have longings for a certain thing that that doesn't really serve us. So aligning with your soul's purpose uh, can also bring surprises. It could surprise you could surprise yourself about the things that actually do manifest and that you can do or that you do call into your life um, that ultimately align with you and can teach you like they bring teachings to you so um yeah I, I feel like there's so many different ways to go with yeah. this but I I yeah yeah no I and I think it's in and why why I asked that question is because I think the idea of living in alignment with your soul's purpose is great but I'm sure there are a lot of people listening who are like okay but like what What's the consequence of that? What does that look like? How do I know? How do I even do it? Where do I start? Right? Like there's so many questions that come yeah. up and I think the biggest one is how. And that's where I think a lot of people get stuck, myself included. Um we, we get so stuck on the how and we get so stuck on the like, well, what do I need to do? What are the things that I'm not doing that I should be doing to align more fully? And um, so if if mm -hmm. someone came to you and, and just like straight out asked you, okay, how how do I align more with my soul's purpose? Where would you have them start? Assessing and mapping is the number one place. We need to know what we're working with and what does our environment look like? I call it our sacred ecology. And so we have these inner ecologies and outer ecologies. And this spans the level from the body. So, you know, physiologically, what is going on inside of my body, which can very much impact my mental and emotional state. Um, so, you know, that could be like the state of your microbiome, you know, your gut health and all of that. And also physically around you, are you exposed to toxins? Are you in a living environment that is making you feel um, trapped, you know? And this can also be be related to your mental and emotional ecologies, your inner and outer ecologies. So when we're looking at the inner and outer ecologies in terms of our emotional and mental realms, we have to assess what, what's going on there. Uh, so what beliefs are we holding on to and thought patterns that are not serving us? What's happening in our relationships outside of us that you know maybe is triggering us or those patterns and those loops that we're experiencing in our relationships or in our job environment, our career, the work that we're doing? And, and so so really putting to, like pen to paper, what is going on on all of these levels so that you can build a map and a very real picture of what is actually going on? What are you being exposed to every single day on all of these levels? That's the very first place to start because then we'll be able to build the discernment muscle of what is actually me, what is not me, and what serves me, and what doesn't serve me. I think that so many people are walking around really believing things that aren't even beliefs that they came up with. You know, they just sort of inherited these beliefs. I know you know this for sure, working with people. And, and that impacts literally everything in their lives. 
everything and it impacts their health and their body because our DNA is epigenetically impacted by our environment. And it's not just the physical environment. It's also the environment that we hold within ourselves with our thoughts and our beliefs and the patterns. So that is like the absolute number one place to start. Yeah. And I can imagine for a lot of people, again, speaking from experience, when you start to assess and look at what's going on, it can sometimes feel like the ground beneath you is starting to shake a little bit and and it's a little rocky and and you're starting to really kind of question everything. Yeah. It's like, who, Mm -hmm. who am I? Who have I become? Why am I the way I am? What are these patterns? Yeah. It can, it can be, it can be heavy work to start looking at this stuff. And I think that's why it's so important to be able to find support in the journey because A, we all have so many blind spots and B, when you're faced with so much of that uncertainty and that questioning, it's important, at least again, in my experience, to find something or someone who can make you feel safe enough to even begin the exploration in the first place. A thousand percent. I feel like there is not one person, um, no matter how much work they have done on themselves, how deep they've gone with this process, that is not served by having someone hold that container for them Mm -hmm. um, and to even guide them because you're, we, we are not meant to do this alone. Like we're not meant to do all of this really heavy lifting by ourselves. Mm -hmm. So, and I think, I think you and I probably see a lot of, especially women who do that because we don't want to burden people. We feel like, you know, we don't want to burden our families or our partners or, you know, our coworkers and friends. And yet we are not meant to be in isolation. So Mm -hmm. that's the other thing that I would also highly recommend as you do this work, just as you said, to find support, whether it's a friend, um, a practitioner. I, one of the things that changed my life and that I really adored was a community women's circle, a moon circle Mm -hmm. that I would go to and you can just be held and supported and not feel like you're burdening anybody. It's so key. For me, especially, there's been a lot of pressure around there there's been a story that if I do this work for other people, I should be able to do it for myself too, on my own. And you know, I've heard that from people in my life. My mom kind of <laughs> is that person who's like, "Why are you struggling with these things? You help everybody else. Shouldn't you be able to help yourself? And it's one of the hardest things to hear because we all like we all need that support. The people who, do it, need it just as much. And so for, yeah, for anyone who's listening, who's also in the healing or coaching space, we are no exception. We also need the containers to feel safe to explore this work on our own outside of the work we do for our clients. Oh my gosh. I feel that so much so often (laughs) as well. And you know, yeah, Yeah. there's always the thoughts of like, I should be here. I shouldn't need help. I, you know, I should be able Mm -hmm. to figure this out. And the truth is like, we often need, like we are meant to do work in collaboration. And the way Mm -hmm. that we often learn things is through reflection in our environment and through other people. So it's in our relationships, it's in our work. And and um, so we can't f- figure things out and fix things, quote, fix things on our own in our own head. It, it really is like an experience that we have to have and to honor that. So, yeah, I'm there right with, with you. Yeah, yeah, for sure. So, OK, so we started with this idea of or my question to you being, you know, when in alignment with your soul's purpose, this is what it looks like. But let's talk a little bit about when someone is not in alignment. What are some of the key indicators or maybe red flags that might signal to somebody that they might need to make some changes to be more in alignment? Yes. Oh, man. And I feel that this, I'm going to just give some generalities, but this really looks different for each person. But one of the Mm -hmm. things that I have found to be consistent is that uh, 
you already have a sense that something is off, right? Yeah, you we, know. we all have that knowing. Like there is no way around it. I think that for many of us, we've become really adept at ignoring that voice. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, that gets us deeper and deeper into this level of disconnection. I think we've been really good at that as a society on a collective level. Um, you know, even just looking at our relationship to nature, right? And like the destruction mm-hmm. that that we've created. I think that is a, a prime example of this disconnection from from our soul and who we really are as a collective. So, but as an individual, we already kind of know. And it's, it's a, the first place is really about allowing ourselves to hear that inner voice, to acknowledge that something might be off, that we know things need to change. Like we hate change as humans, right? I think that's just sort of like a a natural phenomenon. And so we're going to resist it as much as possible, even though we know it might be the best thing for us. So first, pay attention. Pay attention to where you might sense a feeling of contraction versus expansion, or, or you feel something in your body and everybody feels things differently depending on your um, predisposition and like your sense of your your um, the way that you perceive these more subtle energy vibrations but Mm -hmm. what I see in people is usually they'll feel it in their body somewhere and the very very common places to feel this are in your heart and in your belly and this Mm -hmm. makes sense because these are also the two areas where we have the most neuronal connections outside of our brain. And so our gut is like our second brain. I would say it's probably our first brain, <laughs> uh, but it's like our second brain. It's f- chock full of neuronal connections, as is our heart. And so we can perceive things through the heart and we can perceive things through the gut. So we will experience that. And that might f- it express itself as, you know, maybe IBS, like irritable bowel syndrome. You have to, mm-hmm. something makes you go to the bathroom or constipation or just pain or bloating, or you might feel anxiety and heart palpitations and you can't really place why it's happening, but maybe every time some pattern happens or this person shows up or you think about your job, you start to experience things at your body level. And this kind of circles back to what we were talking about earlier with connection to the body and that mm-hmm. that as being intuition as well. So um, I and f- what I have found for myself and for a lot of people I worked with, it's a little bit easier to begin to tune into the um, the energies that we're feeling at that level versus trying to think our way through a problem totally. or think about Right. (laughs) Like Mm -hmm. because our mind can take us to like really dark places and places that aren't even relevant. So let's bypass that um, initially and just kind of get a sense in our bodies. And and so that comes along with the assessment part again is noticing the patterns. So you have to do this for like not just one day, but regularly paying attention to these patterns and these connections to how your body is expressing and what it's saying to you about this one thing and and noticing that. And then for each person, they'll, they'll um, begin to see that they have a la- their body has a language and they have a language, an energy language. And you can begin to decipher that and understand what that means for you. So then you can begin to understand, oh, when I have like cramping in my belly, I know that it means this. Or when I feel that anxiety coming on and my heart feeling like it's ready to come out of my mouth and explode, I, it happens every time this comes around. So I think it's just that sort of self-awareness cultivating that is really, really important. So where, where do Akashic records come into all of this? Yes. (laughs) Well, (laughs) I'm like, let's get to the juicy stuff now. Yes. Yes. So, um, well, Akashic records, I can go into explaining what it is because I think then that'll sort of give a better um, 
framework for understanding of how this plugs in, especially around health. Mm -hmm. So the Akashic records are essentially a vast energetic database that holds the vibrational imprints of your soul, your soul's history, and purpose in this life. Um, It documents everything that has a vibration. So every thought, every deed and action, um, and every relationship that you've had. And it spans uh, across time and across space, like we had talked about before, where this is sort of the soul realm. So when we get into sort of discussion of past lives or, you know, future lives and things like that, All of that is contained in the Akashic Records because it's beyond our concept of time. It's interesting when we start looking at, because I'm also a science geek and I love combining the two, science and spirituality. Mm -hmm. What we are discovering through quantum physics and quantum mechanics, this uh, unified field of energy, this zero point field that we are just scratching the surface on and trying to understand uh, from a scientific perspective. This is really the energy of Akashic Records. This is where everything is held and how everything is connected to one another um, at this quantum level and this energetic level. The ancients, if we look back to a lot of ancient traditions and religions and beliefs, there are always uh, things that reference the Akashic records, even though they might not be using that term. But the term Akasha comes from Sanskrit, and it means cosmic sky. And it refers not only to space, but to also the higher spheres of this interconnected life and existence, this energy field that I was talking about. And the Hindus saw Akasha as the cosmic source of all the elements fire, air, water, and earth. So essentially what also makes up our physical body. So you could say that Akasha and the Akashic records are not some like field that's outside of us ourselves. It's actually in us too. And we are a part of the Akashic records. So how does this work? Well, um, (laughs) if this, I like to use metaphors for this because it's kind of like you know, it it literally will blow our minds. It's beyond our capacity to really understand what it is. But we have these things called Google and the iCloud now that make for apt metaphors. You can literally type anything into Google or your search mode in the iCloud, and it pulls up information that matches that search term. That's Mm -hmm. essentially what we're doing with the Akashic Records. The Akashic Records is like a database, like the iCloud, um, like Google, and we can ask questions, plug into that energy, and receive information that matches Um, at that energetic vibrational level, the answers that we're seeking and sort of, you know, the patterns and um, the insights that'll help us understand maybe the challenges that we're experiencing or our current life experience. So um, yeah, there's a lot more there. There's so many um, people, famous people that have actually tapped into the Akashic records in the field. Um, Lots of famous psychics as well that have talked about this, uh, in years past. I, I won't get into all of that, but what I what I really love about it is that it's very accessible. It you don't have to be of any particular religious denomination or or belief system to um to really receive the gifts of the Akashic records and to plug into them. Um, they just sort of are, you know? <laughs> and so um and there's always really uh, um, healing and loving information that is available to all of us when we can tap into these realms. So that's why I love it so much. And I have incorporated that into my nutrition and my nourishment work with clients. 
Yeah, I love that. I love the combination, as I said in the beginning, of all these modalities, including the science. I think it's important to see how much these things actually overlap. And your metaphor, your metaphor was super powerful too, because I was like, okay, these things are like they're happening in different ways in technology. Like it's possible. We we've seen how it's possible in certain ways. So why couldn't it be possible in these? other ways that you're explaining. It just helps it, it, it helps it feel a little bit more um, real and yeah, and possible. Yeah. Nobody questions anymore how the heck we're able to watch a video that our loved one that lives across the globe sent us in a nanosecond. Like, Mm -hmm. that's incredible. And how is that happening? Um, And the the incredible amount of information and data that's being stored now. So it just it's really interesting, I think, how we as humans have sort of recreated a reflection of what is already in existence. Right. Yeah. It's so cool. Yeah. So cool. Well, I would love to ask you some of the questions that I had in mind um, Mm -hmm. and transition into doing a little mini reading so that anyone listening can get an idea of what it's actually like so they can reach out and do this magical healing work with you as well. Yeah, I would love to. So we can get started by just doing a quick meditation to ground us in and open us up if you're open to doing that. Awesome. Let's do it. Okay. So I invite you to close your eyes if that feels good. And we're just going to get really present in this moment and in this body right now and taking a nice deep inhale, bringing in that present oxygen, allowing your abdomen, your belly, your lungs to expand and slowly and gently releasing that breath, allowing the expiration of anything that was ready to be let go and released in this moment right now and beginning to cultivate a nice, easy, rhythmic breath in and out. And remembering that with each breath you bring in, you are bringing new life force and this present moment into every cell of your body, allowing that to circulate. And every exhale you are releasing something else that was ready to be released, to let go, to expire. And in this way, we're plugging into this natural rhythm that we are meant to exist in. And with that next inhale, imagining that you have these little tiny roots that begin to grow from the bottoms of your feet and the bottoms of your sit bones. And allow those roots to grow into the ground, the floorboards below you, any floors below that, going deep into the earth, breaking through that topsoil and all the different layers, the bedrock of the earth, making their way all the way to the center, this fiery core belly of Mama Earth. And imagine those roots hugging into that mama earth energy. And when they do, allow them to open up and receive that energy, sucking it up like a straw, all the way through the different layers of the earth, through the floorboards, and into your feet, your legs, your knees, your thighs, your pelvic bowl, moving up your abdomen, and your solar plexus, up your back, and into your heart. And when it reaches your heart, taking another nice deep breath and allowing that energy to fill your heart space. Good. And allow that energy to continue to expand and move up your shoulders, your chest, your arms, your hands, and then up your throat and your jaw, your teeth, your nose, your eye sockets, your brain, your pineal, your pituitary glands, and all the way to the very tippy top of your head. 
And imagine just above your head an opening, a portal that begins to open up. And imagine beautiful healing light from above coming down into that portal through your head, through the back of your throat, and anchoring at your heart space, mixing with that Mama Earth energy and taking a nice breath there, allowing that connection to really anchor in. And as you do, imagine more healing light coming and showering you like the most luxurious shower you've ever taken. And with it, washing away anything that's ready to be released so we can open up the field to receive the messages that are waiting for you right now. And in this place of connection below and above, if you could say your full legal name out loud for me, please. Talia Nikki Delju. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and open with a sacred prayer, and then I'm going to go silent for a few moments. Okay. I ask God, pure divine consciousness, put shield of love and truth around me permanently, so only this love and truth will exist between us. I am the masters, teachers, and loved ones of you to channel through me at whatever highest form is possible to say whatever they wish in support of your quest for guidance and recall your divine soul. I ask permission of the Council of Akashic Records to be able to look into your records to remove whatever information I am allowed as part of your quest. Okay, so your records are open, and we can go ahead and dive into uh, the question that you had, if you want to say it out loud. Yeah, so my question was pretty broad, um, but it was to know how I can be more, again, back to the how question, how I can be more in alignment with my soul purpose. And then more specifically, what changes to make in first my business, but also my life to attract both more joy and abundance. Okay. Beautiful question. So I'm just going to tune in. All right. So very often in readings, um, the way that information comes to me is first through visuals. So I see in my mind's eye and I might sense things in my body and um, and sometimes a knowing will will just come through. So I'll just share my process as I'm doing this, too. So uh, you get an understanding of how it's how it's working. Mm -hmm. So right now I am seeing a big tree and a swing a swing set that's on this tree. And I see a young version of you, a child version of you on this tree um, and on the swing of this tree. And the breeze is coming in and the breeze is moving you um, back and forth. And it's this feeling of effortlessness and play and connection to like this childlike connection to the divine that we don't overthink. I feel like, you know, as children, we are all connected and plugged into that. And it's not something that we judge or think about. It just is. And that's what I'm really sensing with you is this incredible, um, sense of flow, like being in this flow state, and that that is the energy that will carry you forward, um, especially with regards to your career. I feel like your soul path is very much um, integrated with your life's work and your career. And so um, one of the messages I'm receiving is that remember in those moments when you feel like 
you need to do the pushing or you're going uphill, that a lot of that is actually an illusion and it's being created by your mind. And that the state that will get you to the mountaintop and beyond more efficiently and more joyfully is being in tapping into that state, that childlike state of play and flow and connection to the divine, just as you were on that swing and this wind is naturally pushing you back and forth and you're feeling it on your body. So it feels very sensual as well. That's another thing that's coming up for you is um, if you're not already bringing in practices that enhance the sensuality, the sensual experience of your life inside and outside of your work. Um, I feel that breath is really important in your work. If you might already be doing breath work with yourself or your clients, um, I kind of feel like that that is an area of growth for you as well Mm -hmm. on a personal level and with work. It's going to be really, really critical. And you have, it's like the the gift of wind. That's something, a term that keeps coming through to me is, um, and the way they're showing me that is, very not just you being swung by the wind, but also like this ebb and flow, but also the wind through your mouth. And so that's where this breath work and this speaking work is going to be really sort of um, what's leading the way in terms of your expansion in your soul work and your soul path with your career. Mm-hmm. Um, so I wanted to kind of pause in there and check in to see you know, if anything's coming up for you or if this is resonating with you. Yeah, it is 100% resonating. I, if I were to quickly tune into my body, the first thing I would tell you is that my breath always feels very constricted and it's, it's like very, I have to put a lot of effort into taking full breaths. Um, and I've known for a long time that breath work is something for me to explore and to begin to practice. And I just have not made it a priority. So it's a good, it's good to remember, um, a, yeah, a good reminder to prioritize that in the near future because it's such an obvious and clear sign in my body physically and, um, something that I, yeah, I sense all the time. What I'm getting to about that, <clears throat> so there's a couple of things. First is that my sense is that through regular breath work, like actual intentional breath work and practice, there are things that are going to open up for you that are sort of waiting to be opened up. And it feels like they're ripe right now, like they're just kind of ripe fruit that are ready for you to pick. Mm -hmm. And the pathway to that is through this intentional breath work. Um, And then what I'm seeing sort of beyond that is that when you're able to do that for yourself, it's almost like you open up a channel where um, the flow of information and guidance comes through that is beyond you, but it's choosing to come through you. Mm -hmm. And this feels very much related to your work one-on-one with people. So it's I mean, you could say it's almost like channeling, but you're literally like a vessel. You're opening up and allowing this wind of wisdom and um, an insight to come through you and through your mouth and your specific words and energetic vibration because that's what's really important for people is to meet – that's a gateway for them and they're really um, – they trust you and and you are – through your work, you are attracting the people that are needing the medicine that's coming through the vessel that is you, mm-hmm. right? So, um, so that's when it like it's they're showing that the breath work can really lead to a lot of ahas, but also just like the next level of what your work looks like, and also how you experience. Um, your life. Yeah. It's it's like it's opening up a deeper level that you can tap into um, and, and you're ready for it. Yeah. And I mean, I like what's amazing about that is that if I just 
paid attention and listened to my body, I would I would have taken action on that so long ago. And that just circles us back to what you mentioned earlier when you answered my question about, you know, what are the red flags? How do you know when you're not in alignment? And one of the main things you said was, you know, tune into your body and, and look at what's going on there. And um, again, yeah, my first response to that would always be breath. And so it's, I'm having a moment of just gratitude there for my body trying to tell me for a long time and Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. And to recognize that again, so much of this information is so available to all of us if we just listened and made it a priority. Absolutely. And I'm also getting something kind of riding on the coattails of this. Um, And I don't know if you're already doing this. I kind of, when I tune into it, I kind of feel a a little bit of sense of resistance around it. So I don't know if this is the resistance that you're holding to it. I'm getting um, chanting. So like actual singing Mm. and chanting, not necessarily like singing songs in front of people, but almost more like a personal practice of chanting. There's something Mm -hmm. here about not just the voice like with you on the podcast or speaking to people, but almost communication to the field and to the divine through that breath and through mm-hmm. sound. And um, and I'm seeing you like on a meditation cushion and you're chanting. And I, I see that as something that you could eventually, if you choose, could be a really beautiful practice that is very personal for you. So I don't know if you've ever even thought about that (laughs) as a practice. Yeah. Yeah. So God, it's so interesting. So it's never, it has not ever become a practice, a consistent practice, but um, (laughs) I have felt the need to return to sound and song. It was such a big part of my life and I've been away from it for a while and I've been trying to figure out how it wants to express itself and what it wants to look like. And I ended up signing up for, a, I took voice lessons for a while and ended up going back last week and it, 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 that, but that wasn't it to your point. It's like, it's not about singing or, or performing or sharing it with people. Um, but I've felt the need to return to song and sound in some way. So that's really good guidance and direction to help me get a sense of what it actually wants to express itself as right now. Well, this is a beautiful example too of how you're already paying attention to the cues. Like you said literally this yeah. week, right? You were you were mm-hmm. already on that path. And I can't tell you how many times that happens where um, they might not, like the, my client might not be fully on board, but they had a hint or an aha or a thought or a dream about it. And so Mm -hmm. um, a lot of times what I see with these readings is that it's not only like confirmation, it's literally a reflection and confirmation of what you already know, but then it can just bring in a little bit of insight through another being and a person who can deliver Mm -hmm. it to you in a different way, right? Then then kind of bypassing sort of our thoughts and our brains and our minds and our schedules and all of that. So that's where I see this where it can be really helpful too. Absolutely. Can I ask you one last question um, around the resistance? Because I feel that so much. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Um, The resistance to doing the things, to committing to a practice, to pursuing a more spiritual path. There's just this like block. And and of course, the mask of it is like, okay, well, it's fear. But I'm is there anything that's coming up around the resistance more specifically? So I'm tuning into a lot of different feelings here. Um, so I'm going to go with the one that sort of is is like at the forefront and what I'm feeling the most. Mm-hmm. Uh, there's something here that you're holding. It's like a belief and a judgment. Um, let me see if I can open that up a little bit more. So it's interesting because even that is multi-layered. Um, there, there's a sense of 
judgment in like in all ways, like that you'll be judged, that you are judging it itself, judging the process, but like not in a very um, like it's not coming from your mind. It's almost like this energetic belief that you're holding. Some of it is yours. Mm -hmm. Some of it is not yours. Actually, a lot of it is not yours. Um, I feel like I if we want to get into this, like ancestrally, I feel like on your mom's side that there was judgment here around this. I feel the energy of your mom here. Um, and so I, what I would say without getting like, you know, sort of too deep with this is to maybe open up and invite insight around that area and the the energy that's stored there. So I'm talking about this, the energy and the relationship where your mom's energy might be inside of you related to that judgment, um, specifically around the connection to, uh, you know, the more spiritual uh, side of things and and, uh, this connection to divine and all these ways of cultivating Mm -hmm. that. Um, And also the, like the being seen thing, I feel like so many of us also hold that. Um, I feel like you're doing a lot of work around that, actually. Like, I don't feel it as strongly for you, the whole, like, afraid to be seen thing. But there's an element here that if if it's and if it's held anywhere, it's held in this area around being seen in a certain way and judged because of maybe some of you know, the more like spiritual based practices or sharing in that way and like the vulnerability that comes with that. So, Mm -hmm. um, yeah. And I think that what I'm receiving information about that from your guides is that just, that part just takes time. It kind of just takes like, you just do it. And then little by little, that's going to go away where I'm seeing the, the intentional work can be around is number one, cultivating that practice that we talked about. Um, so with your breath Mm -hmm. and with your voice, but also, uh, bringing awareness and energy toward whatever you're holding with regards to sort of the maternal line and the judgment around there in that energy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'm like, okay, sign me up, Vanessa, for (laughs) a full session because, again, like, if you were to ask me what is the one area of your life that you've been, like, honestly just afraid to look at closely and finally heal, it is exactly that. It's the relationship there. It's the ancestral stuff. It's the maternal, Mm -hmm. all all of what you just said. Um, Mm -hmm. so not a surprise but it feels very heavy um but it's something that I know I'm working up I'm working up it's like I feel like I'm exercising the muscle to be able to finally go where I need to go with it absolutely and I what I'm sensing is that like you're already on the path whether you know you're cognizant of it or not of working on it Mm -hmm. like you're already doing the work on a level so um and it 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 does feel big. It feels like yeah. there's a lot that's going to open up and come through when you really, really dive into that work. And that, mm-hmm. you know, there's a there's a part of you that knows when you're ready for the amounts that it's going to come in. <laughs> so yeah. honor your honor your timing, too. You know, it's not like that there's any judgment that you're not doing it fast enough or you're not committing enough. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's the other thing I would say and that your guides are like the girl's doing her work, you know, <laughs> like, and so just take <laughs> your divine timing with it. Yeah. Thank you so much. Wow. That was incredible. I appreciate you taking the time to share some of that with me on the episode or on this recording. And I'm sure a lot of people are like, holy crap, what this, what is this? Like, what is this work? <laughs> uh, I know. Yeah, for I'm, I'm still who's trying to understand. Like, yeah, I'm like, I, for anyone listening, like Vanessa and I, this is the, you know, we've recorded on each other's podcast, but we, she, you know, she knows nothing about me outside of this conversation. And I think it's just incredible how you're able to access that kind of information. And um, yeah, thank you so much. Oh, you're so welcome. And I, you know, on that note, I really just want to share that 
for those listening, you know, even if like there's resistance around it or maybe you're being triggered or whatever, right? I I feel that everybody has access to this. Everybody. And as you had demonstrated, like you were already on the path, you're already taking the steps. A lot of this resonated. It, it reflected back things that you already knew. And so yeah. really trusting yourself, trusting yourself when you feel these things. And you don't necessarily need to go to a person like myself or others that, you know, can expand on, on this. You, I, I would very much love to support you if you do, but, um, but you don't have to because you have access to that yourself. And so just remember to get, get support, be in, you know, envelop yourself in love and compassion and, and just commit to yourself, choose yourself every day. Yeah, I love that. Well, we are past the hour here, and I want to be respectful of your time, Vanessa. So I would love to close out by asking you two final questions. The yeah. first is how you would define living a life of significance. Hmm. I feel that living a life of significance I think it kind of comes back around to what I just said. It's it's choosing yourself with a capital S um, mm. because I have found that when we do that in a really loving way, it expands into all aspects of our lives. We impact others and the world by doing that. Um, and that's really my mission with the work that I do is to really help support others in their healing work as you are, Talia. And so I would say, you know, that's, that's what it's about. That's living a life of significance. Mm, choosing yourself. I love that. Love it, love it, love it. Okay, and then last but not least, um, in the spirit of the podcast being called Sincerely Me, we talk a lot about cultivating your relationship to yourself. So if you were to sit down today to write a letter to yourself, what is the main message you would want to say to yourself? You got this, babe. Yes. <laughs> it would just be like yes. one line. <laughs> Three words. <laughs> Four words. Three words. Yeah. Yeah, I love Short, it. sweet, like just the booster I need. I already have everything I need. I got it, you know? Mm -hmm. And so yep. <laughs> that's it. Perfect. Perfect. Awesome. Well, <laughs> please let everyone know how and where they can find you, work with you, social handles, website, all of the goodies. Great. Thank you. So, uh, you can find all the things at wildlyrooted.com. And as Talia had mentioned, we did a podcast swap and her interview rocked. Like it was so <laughs> juicy and good. I am Thank so you. excited to share it. And so you can find that at Feed Your Wild. That's the name of the podcast. That's in all the podcast places. Um, you'll also find that on the website. And my handle on all social media platforms is at Wildly Rooted. And I'm most active on Instagram. I answer DMs. I answer emails. I'm a real person. So <laughs> if you have any questions or just want to connect, I'm I'm there and I'm super open and I and I invite it. So yeah, I, this was so much fun, Talia. All right, everyone. That was my conversation with Vanessa. I hope that this inspired some new thoughts for you, whether or not you agreed with some of the perspectives that were shared. I think the point is that you have something new to think about and new to work with and new to feel into and sit with and reflect on and um, some questions to ask yourself. So take some time to do that and see what comes up. I know for me, this, again, this topic is one that I'm taking a bit of a deep dive into and we will be exploring in much further depth as we move forward. If you enjoyed this podcast, share it with somebody who you think might benefit. Subscribe, rate, and review. It's more helpful than you could ever imagine to us podcast 
hosts and give me a shout out. Say hello on Instagram. I would love to hear from you. Hear some thoughts on the episode. If you do share the episode on Instagram, give me and Vanessa a shout out. I am at Talia Del and I'll catch you on the next episode. Sincerely, me. Thank you.